you're quite right about that song. It'll never catch on. This next song that we run about these five empty seats, and we could put. We could put double the amount of uh, people on them that we've lost as friends over the over the years on the folk scene. Uh, and one of the one of the giants uh, that, that, that we lost far too many fit in any of them. wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> far too many years ago uh, was was a friend of or I was a friend of lots of people on the folk scene, uh, Peter Bellamy. And he demanded that uh, we sang this song. Uh, he just got a B in his bonnet and anybody that knew Peter would know that he but they always have to be in this moment, <laughs> uh, and uh, and so what he did is he he, he did an extraordinary thing uh, for Peter that is uh, in, <clears throat> that he wanted us to do it so much he sent us uh, a cassette tape uh, of the song. Now Peter was not known for his <coughs> generosity, particularly. Uh, yeah, he's humor, in fact, he was he was he was tight. Uh, yeah, he's about humor, isn't he? <laughs> and he's the only fella I know that could, 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 could obtain tapes that precisely lasted the amount of time the song lasted. I used to rely on people sending me tapes of songs uh, that, that would only be last about sort of five minutes, and then I'd have all this amount of tape. To you know, tape stuff off records or something like that. But not with Peter. <laughs> but not with Peter. You know, if he had a song that lasted seven minutes, the tape lasted seven minutes. <laughs> I, I don't know where he got them from. Uh, anyway, he sent us this one, uh, and it's a, it's a song that he did uh, a collaboration between uh, between himself and uh, Rudyard Kipling. Uh, he was very much aware of the collaboration, Rudyard, Jimmy, not so much. But he will be now. We're going to knock them off the seats. You're going to sit up in the seats, though, but there was, obviously there's one big seat in heaven, uh, and that's where Peter's sat there. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's quite sure where God's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, where are you going to all your big steamers with England's own coal up and down the salt sea? We're going to fetch you your bread and your butter, your beef, pork and mutton, eggs, apples and cheese. And where will you fetch it from, all oh, you big steamers? And where shall I write you? When you are away, we'll fetch it from Melbourne, Quebec, and Vancouver. Address us at Hobart, Hong Kong, and Bombay. But if anything happened to all you big steamers, suppose you were wrecked up and down the salt sea, then you'd have no coffee or bacon for breakfast. And you got no muffins or toast for your tea. Then I'll pray for fine weather for all you big steamers. With little blue billows and breezes so soft. Oh, billows and breezes don't bother big steamers. For your iron below and steel rigging along. For all you big steamers, with plenty wise pilots for to pilot you through. All the channels as bright as a ballroom already, and pilots are thicker than pilchards at blue. Then what can I do for you, all oh, you big steamers? Oh, what can I do? For your comfort and good, send out your big warships to watch your big waters, that no one may stop us from bringing your food. For the bread that you eat and the biscuits you nibble, the sweets that you suck and the joints that you cut. Anyone hinders our coming, 
You and-